<laughs> in this video, we're going to talk about the five biggest mistakes people make when starting their diets. Loads of them. Listening to us, one of them. Cut it there. No, in all seriousness. In all seriousness. In all seriousness, the biggest mistakes people make, how to avoid them, and what to do instead. Let's get going. <laughs> Our session at Stanza. Why do I always clap like that? It's the only time you've ever had the clap though. Meet off sex first. You did it once. Yeah. Child out of it. So. Actual proof. 100% success rate. Although I never had a DNA test. Yeah, true. Probably should do that sometime. I would as well because she's mm. quite good looking and doesn't quite add up. Anyway, the biggest mistake, first biggest mistake people make when it comes to starting a new diet is they go too hard too soon. You don't want to do that. Never do my, that. My mum always said, don't shoot your load too quickly. Is that what she said to you? That's what she said, yeah. That's the family motto. <laughs> So, <laughs> don't take after your father. No. So what they do is they try and train and they do like six days a week, seven days a week, when in actual fact they barely made it to the gym once a week previously before they started dieting. It doesn't need to be that aggressive. You don't need to stop your life just to, to get results. Just go moderate. Start off with three times yeah. and then if you can fit a little bit more in, go four times. Always fit a little bit more in if you can. Always fit a Always. little bit more in. Um, Try to eke out every single inch because when you've only got three, you need to make use of it. So with training, basically what happens is you burn about 300 calories when you train, when you weight train in a 45 minute session, hour session. 300, 400 calories, right? By doing an extra two sessions a week, you're not actually gonna be making that much of an impact on your overall calorie balance of the week. What you're far better doing is keeping an eye on your calorie balance and not yeah. trying to kill yourself in the gym every single day for weeks on end. That's exactly right. You're only going to set yourself up for failure. It's not weak, it's more sensible. And then if you've got room for more, then stick more in. Wee. Wee. Coffee, mate. It's your round, innit? Next biggest mistake you'll make with their diets. Next yep. one, being too restricted with your diet from the get-go. Cutting everything out, right? I can't eat sugar, I can't eat yep. carbs, I can't yep. go out for food, I can't yep. drink. Way, way too restrictive. You're gonna stick to it for two or three weeks and you're gonna be fucking miserable. But you see people and they have to make separate meals to all their family yep. or they're eating meals they've never eaten before. They don't know how to cook those meals. Like, why do it to yourself? Like, complete waste of time. Take the meals that you currently eat, adapt them by taking out the higher calorie up portions or aspects of it and adding in lower calorie options with more fiber, adding in a side of veg, Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So remember, there's no good or bad foods. It's like we're in the fucking M1. It. Yeah, there's no good or bad food, so you don't need to be fooled into a thought of, right, I no. need to have everything different. Eat what you like to eat. So I've been asked before, what meal plans can I have? What recipes can I have? Well, what do you like to eat? What did you yeah. eat before you joined with me? Like, and then eat that, but then track it, stick within a calorie amount, and that's it. Like, yeah. literally that's it. You don't need to overhaul your diet completely because there's no chance of you sticking to it. Just eat what you eat within moderation, and start to bring your calories down. Oh, that sounds a bit boring, mate, that moderation. Can't no work, it, can't work. Can't it does work. fucking work. Like, we do it all the time with our clients. Go for an assessment week. Oh, why do I have to do an assessment week? I need to see what you're eating for a week, what you normally eat, so that I can make as minimal changes as possible to your current diet to make this as easy as possible for you. Why would you want to make it fucking 10 times harder than it needs to be? There's no point. I bet there's fucking loads of people on here who have tried um, like dieting and gone with something really quite restrictive or really fucking hardcore and like you will, you will know in yourself that it didn't work it didn't work because the, it did, you couldn't stick to it yeah comment below with what you tried yeah. and how long you stuck to it for because I bet you we could get some right crackers I reckon some people I know have stuck to diets for like two days three days and given up and it's like it's not that you've done anything wrong it's just you've gone about it the wrong way like you've tried to do too much too quick I know it's really boring but it's what you do consistently over time not what you do on one day. You can't have a perfect day and expect to lose weight. It doesn't happen like that. And with that, share this with a friend who keeps doing the same fucking thing, who keeps going restrictive with their diet. Anyway, next point. Point three. Point three. Like that? No, you don't want to start, innit? Two in the pink, one in the stink. You're chasing perfection rather than chasing consistency. Pretty much in line with the first two things that we've uh, that we've said. People think that you've got to be perfect with your training five, six, seven times a week. People think that your diet has to be quote unquote perfect without really knowing what a fucking perfect diet is. Yeah, people try and make it like every day, 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10, every single day, every single little thing they can. And what they forget is actually to get results, you just need to be seven or eight out of 10 consistently yeah. over time. With your training and nutrition, there are some days where you just got boxes to be ticked. I like to say you've got say 10 boxes to be ticked. If you tick eight of them, you're going to be on course for a successful fat loss phase for however long you do it for. If you try and be perfect and get 10 every single day and if you have a day where you don't quite get all 10 and you go, oh, fuck it, I might as well just eat all the cake, 
you're never going to get anywhere. Do you know what though? Like people, it's almost a negative because people are so trying to be perfect that when they're not perfect, they think that they failed mm. when they when they actually haven't failed, and then it sets them off and they go, "Oh fuck it, I'll start again Monday," or then they inevitably don't start again Monday and then they're off it for a few weeks. Yeah, and that's because they're trying to be perfect. And I've had a, f- a fair few clients who do similar things, like they've had to socialize, work dues, weddings, yeah. weekends away, stag dues, and because they can't be perfect, they think they've fucked it. Yeah, but you don't. And I just say to them, look. On a journey, you might not always be traveling at 70 miles an hour. You can go at 50 miles an hour, but you're still heading in the right direction. As long as you don't stop, or as Mm -hmm. long as you don't turn back, you can still go and make progress. So it's like, yeah, that week might not have been 70 miles an hour or 10 out of 10. It might have been a 7 or an 8 out of 10, but it's still 7 or 8 out of 10. It's not none out of 10. And that's life. And the way that you need to frame it is that you need to focus everything that you do around your life and not the other way around. You don't stop your life for your nutrition and training because that's not going to ever happen because your life... It's always going to happen. You're always going to have things come up. Weddings, stag do, yeah. weekends away. That's always going to happen. So trying to stop that for the sake of your nutrition and training, it's going to leave you miserable and you're not really going to do it. So focus your nutrition and training around your life and go, right, what is the best decision I can make in this circumstance? Because this circumstance is happening, whether I like it or not. So what's the best thing I can do? And then once that's done, then I just pick up where I left off. And then that's all you need to do, just consistency, consistency, consistency. And even if you went into a 200 calorie surplus for a day, so you went up to like 2,005, 2,600, over the week, you're still negative, say, 3,000. Mm-hmm. You're still making progress. And people need yeah. to understand that these numbers, it's not like if you don't hit your calorie target, you failed. They're magic numbers. They're like, they're just plucked out of the air. You could change them and be 100, 200 calories different. So if you do go over by 200 calories, you haven't fucking failed. Like Dan says, no. I could go up to 3,000 calories on a day of bit maintenance. And then the other six days, I'm still in a deficit. So yeah. I still made a fucking change that week. That's it. Anyway, next point. Yeah. Biggest mistake number four is that you do not consider the volume that your food takes up in your stomach. Mm -hmm. Obviously, a lot of people talk about cutting calories, which is great, and that does work, and people talk about calorie deficits all you need, and that's technically true, but if you just take your food and you cut it in half, you're gonna get very, very hungry very, very quickly. Yeah, you need to get a bit smarter with the calories that you do have, so not wasting it on higher calorie, lower volume food. So yeah, of course they taste nice, of course they're gonna. That's why things like fucking peanut butter, nuts, avocado, all things like that, oils, cooking, coconut oil, get adding rid of stuff it. like that. Get rid of it. It's like all deemed healthy, but it, you look at the calories that cont- contain in such a small volume, that's yep. doing nothing for satiety, and then it makes it a lot easier to overeat. Even if you are tracking your food and you're still in a calorie deficit, you're going to be hungrier because by default there's less in your stomach. So try to pack out as much veg, leaner meats, low fat dairy, egg whites, taking the yolks out of eggs, mm. maybe swapping potato for butternut squash. Maybe swapping rice for collie rice, broccoli rice, something like that. But just thinking about your overall portions of yeah. food volume is just going to help you stretch those uh, stomach stretch receptors, leave you feeling a little bit more satiated, rather than having, say, a chocolate bar that's going to waste 300 calories. You could have a big fuck off meal for that. Yeah, and that's what when people say they don't eat a lot of food, that's what they think. They think, oh, this doesn't take a lot mm. of food up in the bowl, like a bowl of cereal. Actually, for that 300 calories, 400 calories, you have fucking granola or whatever it mm. is. You could have loads and loads of food that takes up loads of space in your stomach for that amount mm. of calories. So it's definitely something you've got to consider. It's such a common thing when people go, I don't, I, I barely, I barely eat, I, barely I, eat. I, don't, I don't eat much. Or they, or they drink fuck loads of calories as well. And, yeah, yeah. They get, you get the food diary and it's like, yeah, you don't eat a lot in volume if it was put in front of you. Yeah. Wouldn't look a lot, but the calories there. Calories Otherwise there, you yeah. wouldn't be fucking fat. So one of the best tips that Mike gives a lot is don't have foods in your diet that have like uh, more than one macronutrient or main macronutrient. So for example, rather than having salmon, which has got protein and quite a lot of fat in it, have a piece of cod, which has got mainly protein and very little fat. It's the same size, fill it perhaps, 200 grams of it, but it's less calories. And if you apply that across the board to most of your foods, you won't go too far wrong. So like eggs, spit up the egg whites, um, Greek yogurt, 0% Greek yogurt, and then add the calories in for things like fruit, that's going to pad out more food volume. Mm-hmm. They're the best things to be doing when, you're, when it comes to dieting rather than just taking what you eat and cutting it in half. It's not quite going to work. Good tip. That's what she said. Whee! Big tip. Whee! Big, 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 big tip. Big tip. Let's, let's, we give, let's, we give let's. great content and then we're going to bring it back down. Bring yeah. it back down. Down there. Next point. Point five is you focus on the wrong things to gauge your progress. So yeah. you focus on things like scale weight, 
to gauge your progress and you don't take things like progress pictures, you don't take things like girth measurements. Whee! I mean, <laughs> it'd be like 0.5, so there's no yep. point really. You're not gonna see much improvement on that. Like a polo. Yep. I wish it was a fucking, wish it could fit in a polo. Falls off, doesn't it, though? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so focusing too much on scale weight, You'll see a lot of people who start a diet will tend to drop quite a lot quite quickly and they go, fucking hell, this diet's amazing. I've yeah. lost X on this and blah, blah, blah. I've lost the five thing, pounds. The thing is going to happen every single week. Yeah, of yeah. course it's not. The reason why you've lost a lot of weight at the beginning is because typically you've dropped carbohydrates, so you've got less glycogen, less water storage. Yeah. You've left less food within your stomach as well. But then it should slow down. You're not yeah. going to keep dropping. Unless you're like one of the biggest fucking losers on the, you know, you're the biggest loser. You're the biggest loser. Brilliant, yeah, got hey, that first. Got got first. first. You know the big fucking fatties on my 600 pound line? They're going to drop fucking loads. They've got there's loads, loads on to there. drop. There's yes. loads on there. Yeah. So don't be too worried if your scale weight starts to almost plateau. And then some days you might even go up. Yeah. If you know you're sticking to the, the diet, you are losing body fat. If yeah. you are eating in a calorie deficit, you are losing body fat, regardless of the scale weight. It, it measures weight, that's yeah. everything above it. It doesn't measure body fat, it's not a body fat measurement. It measures weight. So, if you have eaten slightly later last night, if you haven't been to the toilet, if you drank more water yesterday, if you did more or less steps yesterday, if you had more or less salt, if you had more or less carbohydrates, if you trained, if you were stressed, if you had a poor night's sleep, all of these things can affect your scale weight. Not your body fat, but your yeah. scale weight. So sometimes your weight will stay stagnant, it will go up, but then it'll come down. And over the long term, it probably that way on this camera, over the long term, if it comes down on average, that's the main thing to look at. Don't look at the daily fluctuations, no. look at the average over time. And obviously over time you want it to come down, but you don't walk around with a sign on your body going, I weigh 70 kilos or I weigh 60 kilos, it's how you look. People can look drastically different at the same body weight in years time because they've trained hard, they've eaten well and they've lost body fat. Just because you weigh a certain amount, stop like fixating on that and thinking, oh, I'm happy at that weight. How do you fucking know? Like, you don't know. You're happy when you're training hard, yeah. you're eating right, you're losing body fat, but you might not be losing loads and loads of body weight. So please don't stress about that. Comment below if you've experienced any of these things, how you got over it, any tips that we've not covered, leave them below. And if you like more of this stuff, don't forget to hit subscribe, share with a mate, and we'll be back in a few days' time for yet another video.